So today's topic is 2.3, the sign law, found on pages 100 to 113 in your text. The, your curriculum outcome is 20.5 to demonstrate understanding of the cosine law and the sign law, including the ambiguous case. And your lesson objectives, number one, to be able to derive the law of signs, and number two, to be able to use the law of signs to answer problems involving triangles that are not right triangles. So remember that our basic ratios for sine, cosine, and tangent only work if we are dealing with right triangles. And if we're trying to solve triangles that don't have a right angle, we will need to develop a new formula. So here is a triangle. We're just going to label it ABC. And what we're going to do is remind ourselves that every angle is measured with, or sorry, labeled with a capital letter. It means every side is labeled with a lowercase letter. So that's little a, this is little c, and this is little b. So what we're going to do here is just draw a line straight down here. And we know that this is called the height. So we're going to call this H. So I'm going to use um, a sign to describe H. So if I say sine A, that is equal to my opposite side, which is H, over my hypotenuse, which happens to be B. Because the thing with the height is that it makes a right triangle. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to call sine B is opposite, which is h, over hypotenuse, which is a. Now in both these equations, I have an h. So I can solve them both for h. So I get sine a multiplied by b equals h. And I get sine b multiplied by a equals h. And that means that these two things are now going to be equal to each other because they both equal h. So we get sine a times b equals sine b times a. And what I can do now is just divide both sides by b and then divide both sides by a. And I get our law of sines, which is sine a over a is equal to sine b over b. So if you don't have a right triangle, we can use our law of sines to, if we know two angles and one of the sides opposite one of those angles, we can find the second side. Or if we know two sides and one angle, we could find the missing angle. Now, I could have drawn another height, but instead of dropping it straight down from C, I could have went straight across from B and made two more right triangles. In doing so, I'm going to find out that the same thing applies, but in that case, I'm going to have sine C is the opposite side, which is the height, over the hypotenuse, which is A. <clears throat> and then I can, now that I know that this height is the same as this height over here, I can make that those two ratios equal to each other. So actually it's a three-part equation that sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So our example says in triangle LMN, angle L is equal to 64 degrees. This should be side L, that's a typo. So you might want to change that in your notes. Side L is equal to 25.2 centimeters and side M is equal to 16.5. Determine the measure of all missing angles and sides. So we're gonna start just by drawing a triangle. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale. So here's mine. Like angle L, I'm gonna put in the bottom left here and call that 64 degrees. Side L is always opposite it, so that's 25.2. I'm gonna call this angle M which makes this side M, which is 16.5. I'm gonna call this angle N, and I don't know the opposite side there. So what I do need to find is all the missing angles and sides. So I need to find these two angles and this side. So we're gonna use the sine law to do that. So the sine law tells me that sine of 64 divided by its opposite side, so that's 25.2, is equal to sine of any missing angle opposite its side. So it'll have to be sine of m opposite 16.5. So if I want to isolate sine m, I'm going to multiply the 16.5 up over here. So I get 16.5 sine 64 divided by 25.2 is going to equal sine m. And remember that when you're looking for an angle, you need to go second function sine. So I'd punch this into my calculator, take second function sine of that, and I get m equaling what I believe is 36 degrees. So now that I know that M is 36 degrees, I can use these two angles to find the third angle. So when you add up 64 and 36, you get 100. And there's 180 degrees in a triangle, so that makes this angle at the top 80 degrees. And now I can use the law of sines again to find the missing side. 
So sine of 80 divided by n is equal to, and we could use either of these ratios. I'm going to use the ratios that gave us. So the sine of 64 divided by 25.2. Now here's where some people kind of get confused with this as a variable in the bottom. What you can do is what people call cross multiplying. So just multiply it up to the top. Or if you wanted to, you could just rewrite this thing right now as n over sine 80 equals 25.2 over sine 64. So just flip both sides of this equation. Make sure you flip both of them though, not just one side. So that means that n is equal to 25.2 times sine 80 divided by sine 64, which ends up giving me a final answer of n equaling 27.6 centimeters. So in summary, if the triangle we're looking at trying to solve is not a right triangle, we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem or the regular ratios for sine, cosine, and tan to help us solve that triangle. The law of sines helps us find any sort of that missing information, and that is sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And your assignment is on pages 108 to 113. Here's a list of the questions that you should be able to do. We'll take the other half of the questions in tomorrow's lesson. And so good luck and see you in class.